This is your daily Facts Matter update, and I'm your host, Roman, from the Epic Times. And now let's begin today's discussion by talking about the Moderna vaccine. Four days ago, Moderna issued an official recall for over 764,000 doses of their COVID vaccine within Europe after they discovered some form of contaminants within the vials. Here's specifically what Moderna released as a part of a joint statement alongside their Spain-based manufacturing partner. Quote, the lot is being recalled due to a foreign body being found in one vial in the lot manufactured at the company's contract manufacturing site, also known as Rovi. Now, it is worth mentioning that Moderna, within the context of this statement, did not specify what exactly the foreign substance was that they found within the vials. And instead, they only wrote in their statement that they had recalled the lot out of an abundance of caution. Here's specifically what they wrote, quote, Moderna conducted a cumulative search of its global safety database and no safety concerns were reported in individuals who received the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine from the slot. To date, no safety or efficacy issues have been identified. Now, these particular lots, the ones that are being recalled, were distributed sometime between January 13th to January 14th within the countries of Norway, Poland, Portugal, Spain, as well as Sweden. Meaning that those vaccine doses, the ones that are now recalled, were shipped out to those countries approximately four months ago. And it's unclear as of right now how many people were actually injected with these now recalled shots. It's also worth noting that this is not the first high-profile recall of the Moderna vaccine. In fact, you might remember that late last year, there was another incident involving the Moderna vaccine which took place over in Japan. Back then, approximately 1.6 million doses of the Moderna vaccine was recalled after the batches were found to have been contaminated with tiny fragments of stainless steel. Those particular batches, just for your reference, they were made by the same Spain-based manufacturer that just released this joint statement with Moderna, the one that we just read a moment ago. And it's also worth noting that back then, three Japanese men were injected with the second dose of the recalled Moderna vaccine, and then afterwards, they fell ill and then died. Just for your reference, the first two deaths, which were linked to the contaminated Moderna vaccine, were of two men, one age 30 and the other 38. They both died just two days after receiving the second dose from that tainted batch. And then the third case was a 49-year-old man who fell ill after receiving his second dose and then died the next day. However, according to a statement from Takeda Pharmaceutical, which is actually Moderna's Japanese partner, at the time, which was back in August, they stated that there was no evidence that these men's deaths were linked to the contaminated vaccine. Here's specifically what they said, again, back in August of 2021. Quote, Stainless steel is routinely used in heart valves, joint replacements, and metal sutures and staples. As such, it is not expected that injection of the particles identified in these lots in Japan would result in increased medical risk. Regardless, though, that statement denying responsibility was given like I mentioned back in August, which is eight months ago now. And as of today, there has not been any updates on those particular deaths over in Japan. And then also with the new recall, the one that was just issued a few days ago over in Europe, the companies did not state what the contaminant actually was, whether it was once again the same stainless steel particles as before over in Japan. Now, we here at the Epic Times, we have reached out to all the relevant companies involved, but we have yet to hear back. However, if this is actually going to play out like it did last time, then likely within the next week or two, Moderna will release an updated statement revealing exactly what this contaminant was. And then again, if this plays out like it did last time, then the legacy news outlets throughout the entire world will promptly move to ignore it. Regardless, if you'd like to read the full statement from Moderna as well as their Spanish manufacturing partner, you can do so over in the description box below. I'll link this PDF down there. And all I ask in return is that you take a quick moment as you're making your way down to that statement to take a detour and smash, smash, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would recommend you do that as well. That way we can get this type of honest news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed every single weekday. And now, let's switch gears just a little bit and move on over to the state of Georgia, where the Secretary of State has just opened an investigation into over 1,600 non-citizens who attempted to register to vote in the state of Georgia. Specifically, Mr. Brad Raffensperger, who is currently the Georgia Secretary of State, he's also currently running for re-election in 2022, and just yesterday, he officially referred 1,634 cases for both investigation as well as for potential prosecution. And all these cases, they involve individuals who are not U.S. citizens, but they were attempting to register to vote. Here's specifically what Mr. Raffensperger said in a release statement as a part of his referrals to these people's, uh, to these investigations. Quote, Secretary Raffensperger is referring for further investigation the 1,634 non-citizens who 
who were identified as having attempted to register to vote during the state's first citizenship check of the voter rolls executed by Raffensperger a few weeks ago. Now, this referral for investigation comes on the heels of a citizenship audit, the one that he mentioned in that statement, that was conducted by the Secretary of State's office, which wound up discovering that these illegal registration attempts were made in over half of Georgia's counties, specifically in 88 out of Georgia's 159 counties. However, the bulk of these attempts, close to 70% of them, took place in just five counties, which were, just for your reference, decaled, Fulton, Winnett, Cobb, and Clayton counties. Furthermore, what's really interesting to note as a part of this investigation is that these attempted registrations that the office discovered, they go all the way back to the year 1997. And so the data, in theory, spans a total of 25 years. However, what they found was that in the year 2016, the rate of these occurrences went up substantially. In fact, according to a statement from Mr. Raffensperger, 80% of these attempted registration attempts, meaning non-citizens attempting to register to vote, took place after the year 2016. I wonder what happened in 2016 that would have made the rate go up. Regardless, here is specifically what Mr. Raffensperger said in his statement, quote, 1,319, or 80.7% of the attempted registrations have occurred since 2016. Now, the timing of this particular criminal referral is really worth noting because it comes amidst the battle that's playing out throughout the entire country regarding checking for citizenship among voters. And so, for instance, you have places like New York City, which recently passed a new law, which is currently being challenged in court, which actually allows complete non-citizens to vote in city elections. However, on the flip side, you have states like Arizona, which are tightening up their voting requirements with the Arizona governor recently signing a new bill into law just two weeks ago, which requires voters to show proof of U.S. citizenship in order to vote in the presidential elections. And likewise, you have a microcosm of this national battle playing out within the state of Georgia. Because while on the one hand, you have the Secretary of State conducting this investigation and pushing for criminal referrals, well, you also have a lawsuit which is currently playing itself out in the Georgia state courts, challenging the legality of forcing people to prove their citizenship in order to vote. Specifically, the lawsuit, which is being led by a group called Fair Fight Action, they're challenging Georgia's citizenship verification requirement. These state requirements, which currently apply only to new U.S. citizens who are attempting to register to vote for the first time, well, they make it such that if their information, their newly U.S. citizenship information, has not yet been updated in the driver's license database, well, they are required to prove documentation proving that they are a U.S. citizenship in order to register to vote. However, Fair Fight Action, this group that's leading the lawsuit, they say that that's too much. They argue that having people prove that they are a new citizen by simply showing a naturalization document amounts to voter suppression. Here's part of what their lead attorney said in regards to their lawsuit. Quote, Through no fault of their own, eligible voters in Georgia face roadblock after roadblock as they try to exercise their right to vote, as we witnessed in 2018 and have continued to witness over the years since. It just shouldn't be this hard to cast a vote that counts in Georgia. And so we will have to wait and see how this case plays itself out in court and also what will happen to the criminal referrals that Brad Raffensperger just officially filed. If you'd like to read more about these two particular cases, I'll throw all the links into the description box below this video for you to check out. And again, all I ask in return is that you take a super quick moment to smash, smash, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And now let's move on. Sorry. Hello. Hey, Roman, it's me. Yeah, I wanted to let you know about the sponsor of today's episode, which is an awesome company called AMAC which stands for the Association of Mature American Citizens. They are quite literally one of the fastest growing conservative organizations in America, especially for those who are over the age of 50. Although frankly, you can be any age to join AMAC. And their benef membership benefits include three different things. The first one is the money saving benefits because they give you a ton of discounts on things like restaurants, vitamins, uh, oil changes, all types of stuff. You can check out their website for the full list of benefits. It's pretty exhaustive. The second benefit is that they give you a subscription to their bi-monthly magazine. It's called the AMAC magazine and it's awesome. It has cutting edge news as well as really, really crisp analysis. And then the third benefit that a lot of members say is their favorite benefit is that AMAC fights for you, for your values on Capitol Hill. Because as they say, there is currently a socialist storm brewing in this country and AMAC is one of the largest organizations fighting back against it. And so if you care about the future of this country, consider joining the 2 million patriots who are already members of AMAC. Just head on over to amac.us forward slash facts matter. That's amac.us forward slash facts matter and join today. As they say, the memberships are great, but the cause is even greater. I'll also throw a link to AMAC down in the description box below. And now let's head on back to the studio. Now, while I was covering the truckers convoy just a few weeks ago, at one of the truck stops in Ohio where people were fueling up and getting ready, well, I was walking around the pit stop, taking a look at the different trucks. I was taking a look at the different flags, the different slogans that people have written on their trucks and, and their campers. 
And while I was walking around, that was when I ran into a truck driver by the name of Rick Daniels. His truck was very cool. On the back of it, there was a place where people could sign their names and leave little messages because he said that while not everybody can themselves go all the way to Washington, D.C., if they sign their name and leave their message, well, at least a part of them or at least their message will go all the way to D.C. And right away, as soon as we met, we had a great conversation. And so then later on in the convoy, we met up. And my cameraman and I, we jumped into Rick's cabin and we had a phenomenal interview where we discussed the goal of the convoy, Rick's own family experience with escaping communism in Indonesia, his thoughts about where this country is actually going, why there's so much groundswell support for the truckers, as well as what will happen if American people, well, if they don't wake up. Here's a trailer for that awesome interview. America is a huge, that is a huge, huge element. If, if America can see this um, and see how many people are on the um, overpasses and the support that the convoy is getting, then maybe that will make them ask the question, okay, what is happening? Why are so many people upset and what are they upset about? The people in the convoy are taking their time off work to come out here and do this and, and be part of it. Every single one of those people normally are somewhere else. What, what did they sacrifice to go stand up on that overpass? They can't take the time to go to Washington, D.C or maybe they don't feel confident in going to Washington, D.C., but they're taking the time to come out here and be on the overpasses. That, that is, uh, I told people, they keep saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I say, no, thank you. You've, you've restored my confidence in the American people and they've lifted my spirits and filled my spirit so that I know that I'm out here for a good reason. If you'd like to check out that interview in its entirety, you can do so over on Epic TV, which is our awesome no censorship video platform. Because you already know that the absolute extreme state of censorship here on YouTube, with even town hall meetings and school board meetings getting censored, well, it makes it so that honest conversations are frankly not even welcome here. And in the process of the censorship, big tech, companies and legacy media outlets, they are together stifling the open discourse that made America great in the first place. And so we here at the Epic Times, we're building out a new platform, a free platform, where you can still find awesome conversations like the one between Rick and myself. So if you want to check it out, the link will be right there down in the description box below. Not only can you check out that awesome interview, but there's a plethora of other content, documentaries, movies, as well as a ton of other shows on there. And so if you check it out and subscribe, not only can you entertain your family, not only can you stay informed, but you can also support the journalism that we here at the Epic Times are striving to do. Again, that link will be right there at the very top of the description box. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and stay free.